Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Masks Off. I'm Tia. And I'm Kim. And today we are talking about um, not knowing how all of you are feeling, but a lot of people we know and ourselves included feel like we are in the middle of a storm. Basically, things are swirling around that are out of our control, but yet we are being brought in for various support, various needs and whatnot. And it's just a lot to juggle. So the quote we're starting off with is from Timber Hawkeye. You can't calm the storm, so stop trying. What you can do is calm yourself. The storm will pass. So when I hear that quote, it's just, again, that reminder, you can't control what's going on outside of you, but you can control what your thoughts, your actions, all of that. So finding that calm space, even with the tornado or the tsunami or whatever storm is blowing around you, how can we continue to find that calm? And at times it's, it's really difficult, let's be honest, especially when we feel like we're just, I don't know, the image that's coming at me right now is like someone trying to throw balls at you and you can't catch them all. And it's like, keep dropping them, keep dropping them. So how about you, Kim? What's showing up for you? Oh, I love that image that you just used because that's exactly how it does feel for me. It feels like, you know, throughout even a given day, I feel like (laughs) with my list of what I need to tackle and accomplish that the balls just keep getting thrown at me. Um, You know, for example, I'm trying to um, help my sister manage my dad's care. My Mm -hmm. dad is elderly. And um, so I've been trying to help him. And as you know, I'm trying to also manage my 92 year old uncle's care. He was just in the hospital with COVID and had pneumonia and has lung cancer. So he's home now and trying to manage that. And it's hysterical sometimes because I get a call from a social worker or a visiting nurse and I have to like, okay, is this my dad's or is this my uncle's? So I'm like, who's calling me and which one am I, you know, which ball am I juggling right now? Exactly. And then, you know, on top of that, um, my daughter is home from school and that's not the problem. The problem is that she's trying to line up her apartment for um, next year, school year. And so we're waiting for lease signing to happen for June 1st, but it's calling the rental property people, calling movers, trying to, can I just tell you how incredibly difficult it is to move in Boston? Because it's a narrow street and it's a one-way street. So just even to have a mover come, Mm -hmm. you have to go through all these hoops of calling and getting a delivery permit. And you have to do that 48 hours. You know, you, it's not wow. just rent a U-Haul, pack the U-Haul up, drive out, unload, bring it up. It's, it's so much more to it. Hmm. So, and she's 18. So I'm helping her cause she's not been through it before. So, right. And, and nor have I, so I'm together, we're doing it, but still it's that hmm. that's another ball being thrown. Um, and then just, you know, my normal stuff, my normal, day to day and then trying to navigate having a business and we're doing a podcast like that's the stuff that I want to be doing right I want to be doing my business and the podcast and focus on what what drives me what motivates me what fulfills me and I feel like I'm being sidelined and Mm -hmm. sidetracked and that's what the feels like the storm oh and then the other one is my bathroom Still, uh, (laughs) I've been redoing a bathroom, which is why I'm in this location for recording the podcast, which is terrible. The light. So I apologize, YouTube people for (laughs) the glare coming in because you can see it's the lighting is awful. But where I normally record, I can't because you can hear the saws going and the hammering. So I'm like, at least it's a little quieter. But we have had such problems with the contractor. And so many issues, this project really started in October. So it's been over six months and it's not like, it's just, it's been problems. Mm -hmm. So that's feels to me like 10 balls being thrown at me. Yeah. 
So I, I, I only share all that not to complain and sound like a victim mm -hmm. into wine. I'm sharing it to say that it's real. It, the struggle is real. The storm is real. And I do know that this too shall pass and things will calm down just like in any real storm. If there's a right. hurricane, like these are hurricane force waves to me, what it feels like in the last couple of months. I know just like after the storm, the ocean will flatten out, the waves flatten out and it'll calm down. I know that. And even while I hear that in my voice, it still doesn't always help me in the moment when you're, if you're swimming and trying to, or if you're on a boat, let's use an example of a boat and there's a hurricane, what is the boat doing? It's like rocking. It's going up and down, up and down. And that's how I feel mm. my mental and emotional well-being has been like, it's like, Oh, all the way up. And then all the way down, like I'm rocking on a wave and it feels so rocky. Like it just, you know, you want to feel like seasick. I feel <laughs> sometimes like sick from the rocking of what's going on in my life sure. and not to be over dramatic, but just to illustrate a point, you mm -hmm. know, that, um, so it's how to, so it's, it's recognizing that even though I have like, you know, the wisdom of, I know this too shall pass, it'll calm down. It doesn't mean that in those moments that I haven't, or that we all won't feel that rockiness from time mm -hmm. to time. So are you feeling out of control? Like it's so much is yes. out of your control at this point? All of it's out of my control. That's the problem. And, mm -hmm. and so when that's the other thing, along with the quote, do you mind reading the quote one more time? Mm -hmm. What does the quote say? Let me bring it up. Hey, it was, okay. it was the other quotes. I think that we were reading where it helps you learn. You can read the other one. So the one um, we started with was you can't calm the storm. So stop trying. What right. you can do okay. is calm yourself and the storm will pass. And then, um, what was the other one? It was along the lines of, it was the Dolly Parton one. Storms make trees take deeper roots. Right. Okay. So it's that one. So yes, I feel out of control because, and that's what the quote we're using today is saying, you can't control the storm. You can only control the calm within. Right. And sometimes I can, and sometimes I can just go on my breath and sometimes I can meditate and I can calm myself. And like I said earlier, sometimes not, you right. know, but what I, but to your answer, your question is what I can learn from the whole entire thing is it is showing a mirror to me of a pattern, a lifelong pattern of how I react when I can't control things. Okay. Talk more. What's your pattern? My pattern is when things feel out of control, out of my control, when things are out of my control, then the feeling is anxiety or fear. And then I want to go in to fix and, and try to control it, control the uncontrolled fear of the unknown mm -hmm. or fear. It, yeah. All of it is. I don't know what's going to happen with this bathroom other than I know it'll eventually get finished and they'll eventually um, be done. Right. But right now I feel displaced. I feel very displaced. So that's, that's triggering a feeling, an old feeling in me with my uncle and my dad, you know, all of that. I can't control any of what's happening. No, it's um, just even facing the grief and the sadness mm -hmm. and watching and witnessing the suffering. So it's like, I go into control mode of, okay, well, let me get very, very busy calling nurses, calling aides. Let me try to control and just get it all and fix it all. I get very busy trying to fix it all because to witness and watch someone lose his independence and his health and his everything is freaking scary. It's scary. It's, mm -hmm. it triggers me. Like I am repeatedly telling myself, I do not want to end up like that. Mm, such a great, right. yeah. So it's mirroring back to you, your biggest fear for yourself. One, right. That I don't want to be powerless, helpless, 
um, lonely and suffering. Mm -hmm. Those are huge childhood fears to be alone, alone. Mm -hmm. And that's just, we're wired for that, right? right? We all um, are wired for belonging. So we will almost always all feel fear being alone, right? um, suffering, like I won't be able to handle the suffering. And what did I say? Oh, helpless and powerless. So it's huge Mm -hmm. that all, so then I just get very busy. That's a big storm. That's a big wave. Yeah. That's hurricane force. It is. And so noticing that this is happening on the outside and gently inviting you to notice it's, it's also on, it is inside you as well. A hundred percent, you know, so yes, it's happening here, but you're taking on that they're mirroring your dad and your uncle are mirroring their situation to you, your biggest fears, your childhood wounds. And that's why you're feeling out of balance and you're not able to find the calm because your inner child is like, wait, this is all happening. I don't want it to happen to me. How can I make it? So it doesn't happen to them. Then it won't happen to me. Yes. Yeah. So really it comes back like always doesn't necessarily mean in this situation, I think finding the calm within you, because I feel like that's too big of a leap right now. You know, it's like, oh, just find the calm. But that to me feels like bypassing because there's so many other layers here that are showing up for you, which you are aware of and completely able to identify, state out loud and acknowledge. So now how can you nurture those fears within you? So you're not just, oh, I'm just going to meditate and be calm because that doesn't stop the storm within you. Right. Because the, that fear and that worry and that old pattern and childhood wounds are still active. Totally. And so just to go back to the analogy of the storm, isn't it? I I don't know the science of this with a Mm -hmm. tsunami tsunami. Isn't it like an earthquake or something that's happening in the ocean floor. That's kind of rumbling underneath until it explodes. That's my understanding, but I am not super well versed. So (laughs) we're just going to go go with that. We're going to go with that. We're not science, (laughs) but I'm pretty sure it is. Just to make the analogy of what you just shared is that if I like, just say, okay, let me just meditate. Let me, let me go in my toolbox. Let me do Mm -hmm. this to just calm it down. Let me calm it down. If I'm bypassing, then that is going to still be percolating underneath just like the tsunami does until it just kind of comes up. So it is and, and explodes into, um, what a tsunami does. <laughs> right. And so then, um, going in and feeling the feelings is the key going in. And even, you know, another layer potentially is saying, okay, this is happening to my father. This is yeah. happening to my uncle. Cause that is, that's the isness, Right. Correct. That's it that is, is happening. Yes. hundred percent. And you can't be there with both of them, you know, every day anything, you right. know, and your father's in another state and there's so many other added pieces. So that is the isness. It is. And that does not mean that is going to be your destiny. Yes. You can see the fear, how future based right. that is. And that's totally an inner child thing of mm-hmm. looking at my dad and saying, Oh, I could end up there. That is so future based. Right. And you could, or you might not, you know, it's no different than when we have our worries with our kids, you know, the messy room or whatever. And it's like, Oh, they're going to be a slob and they're going to have cockroaches and they're going to have all this stuff. And then they're not going to have any roommates and they're going to get booted from their apartment and they're going to be live on the street, (laughs) living on the streets. Oh yeah. So it can can catastrophize quick. Right. It is the same thing. And I think that my feeling is, is that with, cause we talk all the time about how life just is right. The events that happen in life are just neutral. Mm-hmm. Like my dad, this happening to my dad just is my uncle right. just is dealing, having contractors that do what these contractors are doing happens. It just right. is right. It is. So 
And we've often shared and talked about how the events that take place can often show up as an opportunity to mirror for us where we have room to grow. Exactly. And especially, especially when we're being right. triggered. Right. Because the same situation could be happening to you. If you mm-hmm. had a contractor in your house doing your bathroom and it could maybe t- be happening, taking just as long and you may have zero reaction to it. Right. I don't know. You know, right. maybe that one would bother anybody. I don't know. <laughs> but Who knows? Or, and maybe one time it would and one time it wouldn't based on all the yes. other circumstances too. We just don't, we don't know until it's You just happening. don't know. And that's, and, and so that's why I only bring that up to illustrate that events are just neutral for the exactly. most part. You know, and you could have an elderly parent that you would respond completely or react very different than the way that I'm reacting. Cause I need to learn this lesson. You know what I'm saying? I do. I he- totally hear what you're saying. And it's also important to remember too, like there's the isness, the, the situation, the neutral situation is happening. Yep. And there's, you know, there's the two sides the, yep. of, you know, so there's the aspect of, yes, you still have to manage and do stuff for them. And your internal landscape. So it doesn't mean like, oh, and we've talked about this before. This is the isness, and we just like throw up our hands or like whatever. Yeah, this still take action steps. So you still like juggling those balls that are being thrown at you, trying to catch them. You still have to take action to yes, talk to the social worker, talk to the nurse, whatever that is. That still means those things have to get done. Yes but noticing those, how is it triggering within you? And so that's what makes it feel like the tsunami. Yep. So it's, that's what makes it feel bad. And that's the thing. So we think it's this, all this external stuff is getting thrown at us. And yes, right. There is reality to that. Sometimes we are truly over. I mean, we're not discounting because you are experiencing that in a big way right now. Yes. And your inner stuff is making it even more overwhelmed feeling. Totally. And, and, you know, going back to flow, Mm -hmm. right. If we're just flow and present moment living, right. So, okay. In this moment, I talk to a visiting nurse and I have a conversation about what's next. Yeah. The next moment I'm recording podcasts with Tia. Then the next moment I have a client after the next moment I have a call to talk about my dad stuff and just deal with it in the moment and flow through the moments and through all the balls coming will lessen mm-hmm. my suffering. What makes the suffering harder when all the balls are being thrown at me is the story that I attach right. to all the balls being thrown at me. Oh my God. I'm so overwhelmed. Oh my God. It's so much. It's so much. It's just like, it's too much. I can't handle. And I watch my, I have witnessed Mm -hmm. and watched my inner dialogue doing that. Sure. And it's too much. I can't handle it. It's too much. And that's why I said, yes, when I was recording a different thing yesterday that no, you got to, I can Mm -hmm. stop and pause recognize and hear that inner dialogue of this is too overwhelming to in this moment ground myself I have amazing coping skills I have phenomenal coping skills I have gotten through so much in my life I will get through this I am getting through this with grace and ease And I will learn my lessons, feel my, it's, it's a whole bunch. It's a whole bunch of things. This isn't just one thing going on. No, it's what you said, feeling my feelings, not bypassing, learning my lessons. It is about present moment living. It is about changing my mindset. It is about just taking one thing at a time. It's a whole bunch. And it's going to (laughs) throw out something. There's so many ends. There are so many ends. And maybe we can wrap this up and we can talk about it in the next yeah. episode too, because um, is sometimes too, and we talked about this in another episode, I don't remember if it's released before or after, so I don't want to go too into that to take away from yeah. um, our amazing guest episode. And 
is sometimes you may not have the bandwidth to do that inner work right now because there is so much external work that's being asked of you. Yes. You know, so you can Mm. hold those feelings for when you have the bandwidth to actually explore and question and deconstruct and heal and integrate. And maybe, and I don't know if this is the case, I'm just throwing it out there. Maybe because of all these external things happening, you could just notice, oh, that's my inner child again. Oh, that's a childhood wound. Okay, I'm going to revisit this when I'm not feeling like the balls are being thrown at me over and over and over because I have to take this next step with my uncle and this next step with my dad and this next step with my work stuff. And right now, sometimes survival is holding your inner wounds and saying, I see you, I'm here for you. I'm going to honor that you're rising up and I'm going to quiet you for a minute while I deal with this next thing. And I'm not, I'm going to come back to you and it may not be for another week, two weeks, three weeks, whenever you feel that wave, like you were talking about, you're getting tossed around. Maybe it's when the waves aren't tossing you so much and you have a little space because if we just dabble, it may add on to your plate of overwhelm. Like I should, the should be, I should be yeah. deconstructing. I should be feeling right. But maybe mm-hmm. that's too much for your nervous system right now. Just right. throwing that out there. Yeah. So I love that. Let's end here on that note and let's continue in the next one. Okay. <laughs> let's explore Good. that. Cause that right. is another episode in and of itself. So that's awesome. All right, let's do that. So thank you everyone for listening. Nothing like leaving you on a little cliffhanger. (laughs) I know. (laughs) But that just means stay tuned. (laughs) Exactly. Okay, everybody. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye.